there's nothing like it. We're like eagles on the open highway. Well, here we are in front of the Adams Museum. It's been a kind of an interesting day, right? Adams House, brothel, and now we're back to the museum. I mean, the history is just getting deeper and deeper, and we're digging it. Well, let's go in and have Carolyn tell us a little bit about the museum. I think that's good. Let's go. So we're here in the museum, finally. This is fantastic, I got to tell you. It's really awesome. Yeah. We're sitting in front of this little locomotive. Uh, Carolyn, tell us a little bit about the museum and, and what it represents and, and how people can best utilize it. Sure. Well, the museum uh, opened to the public in 1930 and uh, it's the oldest history museum in the Black Hills. Wow. It tells the history of Deadwood and some of the Black Hills as well. And it was built uh, by W.E. Adams, William Emery Adams. Wow. He's familiar with us now. <laughs> yep, so he built it uh, in 1930, like I say, and then he donated it to the city of Deadwood. And then a nonprofit such as Deadwood History Incorporated is responsible for overseeing the operations of it. So in this museum, what are they, I mean, there's a lot of things that I'm looking at going, wow, what a, what a collection. Yeah, it is. It's quite an eclectic collection. And we have great artifacts about the legends, Calamity Jane, Wild Bill Hickok, Potato Creek Johnny, uh, Deadwood Dick, things like that. And then we have natural history on the lower level. It's all dedicated to the beautiful natural history of the Black Hills. And okay. so that's quite an experience as well. And so, as a visitor coming into town, mm -hmm. and you've shown us these attractions, we're going to see a couple more. How do people, is this the best place to start? Uh, there really is no best place to start. Any one of our properties are great. Uh, they all work together to tell the complete history of Deadwood, which is really cool. But they can operate independently. You can come to any one of our properties, the Adams Museum, the Days of 76 Museum, um, or the Adams House, and you can purchase a combo pass that will get you to all of our properties and save you some bucks, which everybody likes. Really? So wow, it's yep. kind of like an e-ticket? Kind of. Is that what this is? Yeah, look at that. Combo ticket. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, take a look around. Yeah, please. So this is the Legends of Deadwood room, and it pays tribute to all of the legends, um, some you that are familiar to people and some that are not. Um, like here's Calamity Jane behind you, as we know her in her buckskin outfit, dressed as a man. This is Deadwood Dick. Uh, he was a fictional, complete fictional character in Deadwood's history. He became popular through dime novels. And here is the first uh, Deadwood Dick, who was an at love. He was an ex-slave. Came to Deadwood in 1877, and they were having all kinds of celebrations and contests because it was the 4th of July. So he enters this contest for roping, bridle, bridling, saddling, and things like that on a horse. He won every single competition, $200 at the time for wow. winning all those. And then the city said, hey, since you're such a studly kind of cowboy guy, <laughs> can we have you portray Deadwood Dick, and he said, well, sure, why not? <laughs> Next day, he left town. Oh, no. So, yeah, wait. So then we've had a series of five over the years. And of course, Potato Creek Johnny, uh, he discovered one of the largest gold nuggets that was ever found in the Black Hills. He found that in 1929. It's over 7.3 troy ounces. And then wow. William Emery Adams bought it from him for the price of $250, which was fair price at the time, because the gold standard then. And uh, so now we have it on display here. And then we have life-size figures of some of our uh, legends, like Deadwood Dick. Here's uh, Seth Bullock, who was the first sheriff of Lawrence County. And then Calamity Jane right here. And Dora Dufran, she's one of, oh, sorry, Dora. Whoa, Dora Dufran, she's one of our favorites. She was a madam here in Deadwood. And who's this character? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got He's one of our new <laughs> legends. <laughs> here, the wait. fun thing is you can take, yeah, see, and then you can put your cell phone in here and you can take a selfie <laughs> of yourself. Yeah, so that's fun. 
So there are so many wonderful things to see in this museum. We wish we could show them all to you, but we asked Carolyn, what are the top three? She just took us through one room. The second one is this plesiosaurus, right? Right. One of a kind? Yes, it Tell is. Tell us about it. Well, this is a plesiosaur. It's 95 million years old. Wow. And it was, I know, it was found by two amateur archaeologists, Charles uh, Haas and his son Arthur, and it was found in Fruitdale, which is just like 30 miles north of here. So it's in the Sturgis area, actually, that where that is. And they uncovered it, and they donated it to the Adams Museum right away. And then we had it uh, down at Disney World, and they have a big a laboratory there where they analyzed it and they were the people that discovered that it's a one-of-a-kind plesiosaur. Usually wow. a plesiosaur either has a little head and a long neck or a big head and a short neck and this has both. So wow, it's like, wow. wow. So it, it is its own species here. That's Great. amazing. Yeah. And to find that and uncover it, how, what are the odds? I know and by just by stroke of luck for some amateur archaeologists right. or anthropologists or Paleontologist, Paleontologist, I guess you would say that we're out there. And yeah. here it is on I display. Know. You can Adams come and see it. And Adams Museum. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, let's head to number three. Okay. You have something very interesting here now that you want to show us. We do. When Deadwood was founded, there were um, a lot of Chinese people who came to work here. Some of them came to be miners, but most of them were merchants and cooks and ran laundry operations and things like that. And some became quite successful. They always liked to celebrate their Chinese heritage. So every year they would have, during the Chinese New Year, they would have a parade. And this is one of the things that was featured in the parade, this beautiful ornate, very colorful dragon that right. they had in it. Is this an original piece? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what's the final piece that we're going to look at today? Well, it's one of the largest things in the museum. All it's right, let's look at it. Okay. The final thing I want to show you today is the biggest artifact and the heaviest artifact in the museum. It is this locomotive right here and it came to Deadwood in 1879. It was built in Pennsylvania and then disassembled and then shipped to Bismarck, North Dakota and then put on a freight wagon from Bismarck to Deadwood. Wow. And it took a, quite a long time. It only traveled at like two miles an hour maybe. So it took days to get here, you guys. And the thing is, it was brought, bought by the Homestake Mining Company so that they could go in with their little system of trains that they had and they would take uh, lumber into the mine and then they would take ore out of the mine to the refinery. And uh, this thing weighs five tons. Wow. So could you imagine pulling that? Those were some hard working oxen at the yeah, time. Sure. Yeah, I mean, the thing that we've learned about history when we go back in time, how important trains are, yes. no matter what they are, big or small. Right, like we mentioned at the Adams House. Right. How did it change everything? It brought all these things from all over the world right. into this beautiful home. And one thing about the Homestake Mining Company is, oh, I have to tell you a great story to finish this off. Okay, so they had this in use until about the 1920s, and then they went to compressed air instead of the steam locomotive here. They had it and they said, well, we don't want to get rid of it. Do you guys want it? Do you want to have it at the Adams Museum? We're like, oh, of course we do. <laughs> so that was in 1932. And if you remember, the building was built in 1930. Right. So you don't really take one of these in the front door because it's a monster, right? So how do you get it in here? Well, they took the roof off. No, or they knocked they... that wall out right there. Wow. They that brand new building, they knocked the wall out and when, then what they did is they built um, a trestle and they laid a rail down and it came in under its own steam power wow. and sat here ever since on this original rail that it came in on. That is awesome. That's really awesome. And one of the things that I, I love looking at old steam engines mm -hmm. and like in the logging industry, they call them narrow gauge. Yes. So they built these mining uh, engines and, and cars the same way. They had to get into little places. Mm -hmm. So narrow gauge, it's not a full size, but these yeah. were the workhorses. Yeah, definitely. And this thing really did work for, yeah. the minute it got <laughs> here, it was put to work for the next 25 years or so. Yeah. Well, some awesome. great stories. And you guys need to come see this museum. It's a, It's got a, so many cool things in it. Mm -hmm. um, we're not done yet today. You're going to take us uh, to a couple of other places that people need to see when they're right. in town. Absolutely. What's next? 
Next, we are going to head to the Days of 76 Museum. Fantastic. Well, let's get there. Let's do it. Yeah. Hey, we hope you're enjoying this series so far. This is Sturgis Without the Rally, brought to you by Cobra USA. We want to thank them for that. We've been running their parts for years. They have a full catalog of made in the USA parts, whether it's exhaust, air intakes, uh, big ass racks, sissy bars and freeway bars. Check them out. Yeah, we run it all. Yes. And hey, go to TulaneLife.com. You can see Cobra parts and many other parts as well. So back to the video. Pretty amazing. Uh, as we're sitting here talking about uh, where our next stop is, we hear bikes rolling down the boulevard there. So there are bikes, we're even in here. off season, but there'll be way more when it happens. So Carolyn, we're at the second of our last stops today. Yeah. Where are we? We are at the Days of 76 Museum, and we're standing right here in front of the bronze statue of T.C. Holloway, who was a great rodeo champion. Um, so that's a tribute to him. Fantastic. And there's something really special inside that you want to show us, right? There is. We have a really great Native American gallery that we just put some updates in, and so we want to show that off to everybody. That's always really a good thing to see, so we want to see that for sure. Yeah. So, let's do it. Let's go see it. <laughs> so where are we at here? So this is the part of the um, celebration of the Days of 76. It talks about all the different activities that happen. And this is beautiful, this uh, panorama behind us of, of the Native American presence that they had here. For years they had people from all over the state come and present themselves and they would set up an encampment and they would uh, do dances and they would do their uh, practice their lifestyle and let people learn about how, how it used to be for them. And is it still going on today? No, unfortunately it's not. I'm not exactly sure what caused it to, uh, mm. participation to keep going on, but it happened up and lasted up until at least the 50s and 60s, I'd say. Wow. Yeah. And these are the Lakota Indians. That's right. Yeah, and I, I, my family grew up in uh, southern Idaho, so the Blackfoot <laughs> tribe, and they used to do these events as well. Nice. And we'd go there as kids and, and see how they lived, and mm -hmm. because we, we don't understand that. Right. Right. And it's important that we do. It is very important. And they're important. such a big a part of, of our community here and our history. So. Well, let's yeah. go see that exhibit you've been working tirelessly on. Oh, tirelessly, <laughs> yes. Oh, let's go. So you just saw a bison as we walked in, which is one of your favorite animals. Well, I want to show you the book on the way out because it has how many bison there were. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, Carolyn, we're here in this Native American display mm -hmm. that you worked hard on and so is the whole group. Tell us what you're most proud of and what we're seeing in here. Well, what you're seeing is actually a collection within a collection. We acquired this collection from a gentleman named Don Clauser who had a trading post here in Deadwood for years and then um, the city acquired the collection. And so it actually represents a lot of different tribes, not just the local tribes here that we have. And it pays tribute to their relationship with the land and also their um, crafts and their design and their relationships with uh, familial relationships and intertribal relationships. And so we just have a lot of information here. It doesn't, like I say, necessarily concentrate on the Lakota in our area, but it's, it's an overall of a lot of different Native so, Americans. I don't know if people can hear in the background. Yeah. Um, we stepped across kind of a band here. Mm -hmm. What happens when you do that? What happens when you do that is this music goes off, <laughs> which is, uh, it's drum music that was performed by a local group. And um, it celebrates, for celebrations, they would have people dance in, uh, dance in a circle around the drum and women would go one way and then men would go the other way and uh, so they had a lot of dances that they did. And that's why we like to do this because history and the pages of history go fade into time mm -hmm. and we like to go back and re-see that because you don't want to lose that because it fades away. Right, it does. But I also notice you've got some like pelts laying around. What? Why would they be out here? Well, because 
You know, we've tried to take our museums from a do not touch to a little more engaging and inviting and welcoming and wanting them to actually have an experience, a hands-on right. experience here. So what we've done is created these three different pedestals that have all kinds of different pelts and hides and trade beads and trade silver that people can see and touch and look at up close. Well, I think that's a really great idea. I mean, we were in that sand over at the other museum, uh, and this is great for people to be able to touch and feel mm -hmm. what, what the pelts are like. It and gives you the a little better idea. Like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so. you know, once we walk out the doors, we'll be in the present, and maybe we can eat lunch. <laughs> well, we've got we've got one more stop. <laughs> All right, and one we'll, more. we're going to the heart. Yep, the Homestake Adams Research and Cultural Center. And we'll end it there. That's right. So should we? Go. Let's, go. Let's go. So before we leave, the beloved bison, this book right here has 29,000 bison on each page. 30 million bison. And after the slaughter, what happened? Yeah, can you believe this? In 1890, only 700 were believed to have survived. So if you look at this pink column here, that's after the great slaughter. That's amazing. Wow. So let's head to the heart. Well, I can tell you this, it's been a wonderful day. I mean, Deadwood, South Dakota is a must see. And if you've been here, great, but take some time here and really get into the history. Well, I've got to tell you, we saw the Adams House, we saw the brothel, uh, we went to the Adams Museum, mm -hmm. we went to the 76 Museum, which was really incredible. Yeah. You did a great job on displaying the Native Americans. Thank you. Where are we ending the day? We are ending the day here at the Homestake Adams Research and Cultural Center, better known as the Hark, because it's just easier to say. <laughs> and it is a repository for archival materials. We have things dating back from, oh, the 1860s up until the present time. And our largest collection of historical documents that we have here came from the Homestake Mine, which is just three miles south of here. The Homestake Mine was the longest operating, deepest, and most productive mine in the Western Hemisphere. Over its 126 year um, existence, it pulled out 41 million ounces of gold. Wow. And so at today's rate, that's a, that's a few billion dollars. Uh, just a few billion, right. yes. And speaking of money, <laughs> how can people donate to the Historical Society? Well, that's great. If you're interested in donating to Deadwood History Incorporated, you can go to our website, Deadwood History, and it will tell you uh, all about our organization and the great things that we do and why your donation is so appreciated and so needed. Well, and I have to tell you, we need to really thank you and Rose yes. and the team there. Um, she's lined up some other events for us tomorrow as well. Great. But you guys have been so great. And awesome. we always say this, we meet new friends. Yeah. And you met our wives. And, yes, you know, it's just yes, been a yes. wonderful day. And we want to thank you for that. Well, um, thank you. To take yes. time as the executive director to spend with a couple guys you don't know. <laughs> well, now we do know. Right. And now we're all friends. <laughs> and so. we call that shaking hands with America. That's right. All right. Great. <laughs> great. So we'll, we'll see some better things uh, down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, Is she going to join us on the down the road? I don't know if she's going to join so us. So we usually throw road. our arm out oh, and say, see you down the road. So, okay, so we'll guys. Do three, two, one, and then we'll go it. Okay. So three, two, one, see you see down, you down the, the road. road. What a great day. We've learned so much. We met some great people. We saw some great history. We're relaxing and having some great food now. I think there's, a, what, four to one, four salmon <laughs> to one fajita chicken salad. This thing's amazing. And it was even served in a pie pan. It looks really good. Yeah, it looks good. But hey, we're all raise your glass. Yes. Cheers. Thank to history you, and good times. And Carolyn. Thank Yo. you. And we will. Cheers. And we will. See and we will we'll see you, Deborah. We are at Deadwood Cycles in, in Deadwood, South Dakota with our friend Jason with Deadwood Cycles, with Deadwood, South Dakota, with Jason. Yes, yes. You, you got that right, man. Jason, where are you? I'm right here. Come on over. What do we got? I, uh, I reached out to the guys from uh, Deadwood PD and they wanted to contribute to your patch wall and then, I mean, I guess you gotta have a oh, patch. Oh, gotta have that. Well. Look at that. 
We're going to show you this. We're going to go live with him as well or on one of his podcasts here. Yeah. Uh, tonight or tomorrow night. It'll air down the road. A yeah, probably bit. about two weeks maybe. About okay. Week. We'll give you a heads up. When cool. Airs. And we'll unveil the patches as well there. So <laughs> thanks, Jason. Yeah, you guys are welcome. Thank you. What a hell of a day, right? Great day, wonderful day, a lot of history. I mean, this was fantastic. Yeah, we did the tours. Um, we ended up over at Deadwood Cycle. Jason told us about a, a charity event that they were holding, auction, raffle. Went over and saw that. It was a blessed thing to see. Yeah. There's yeah. a baby that has some heart problems and the whole community shows up and they're doing raffles and I won't tell you what the name of it was. <laughs> uh, but it was really cool to see that community come out. We're now at Legend Steakhouse in the Franklin Hotel. And uh, Lance, what'd you have over there? I got the filet, medium rare, little char, au gratin, and some green beans, and it tastes really good. Laura, what did you have? I'm, I'm going light tonight. <laughs> well, wait, I don't know if you can even hear that. Oh. I'm going light tonight. I decided not to eat. Actually, no, I just set my steak back for just a little bit more cooking on it. And Teresa had the elk gnocchis, right? Yes. Oh, and it tastes so good. I had the filet, medium rare, or gotten. Josh got the, the ribeye, medium rare, less. He wanted it really red. Potatoes, Yukon potatoes, green beans, a couple beers, cocktails, wonderful. So, hey, let's, let's eat. eat. Let's get full, let's go to sleep and wake up, because tomorrow's gonna be awesome. We might close this out tonight later. Right. So let's eat. Let's eat. What a hell of a day we've had. So what do you have to say about this? Well, I think if you're ever in Deadwood, South Dakota, you gotta come into the number 10 saloon because you can see Wild Bill Hickok's chair that he got murdered in. Yeah, there's a lot of history here. We saw that all day today. We're gonna see more tomorrow. Ugh. But hey, what a great meal we had. The ladies are enjoying this town like no other. And there's so much more to come. So hey, with that, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Tell your friends or you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fire you. I'll rehire you. If you comment, give us a thumbs up. Notification's really important. Smash that bell. We're out. We're out. <laughs>